In one second. Irish? Nag-live na ba ako? Hindi pa. Wala pa? Oh, never mind. <laughs> I I have to repeat, Mr. Benji. No problem. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> Give me one second po. Uh, connection. Uh, we'll see. Okay, here we go. Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening to all our viewers. Thank you for joining us for the second episode of Ang Artimo. Uh, once again, I am your host, Michael Di Peralta, and we are fortunate to have our second speaker for tonight or guest, Mr. Benji Aglim from Texas, United States of America. So um, I would like to thank uh, each and every one of you for subscribing and supporting our channel and supporting the respiratory therapy profession, especially in the Republic of the Philippines. So um, again, a uh, reminder to all our viewers, I know you guys have been supportive of our show and uh, I do apologize for the technical difficulties last week. And we would like to thank Mr. Uh, Dr. Noel Tiburcio for uh, being patient and having uh, taking the time to sp speak with us uh, last week. If you are hearing me loud and clear, please just comment on the chat box. And if any technical difficulties, please let me know right away so I can fix whatever it is causing the difficulty for tonight's show. Thank you so much. And also, I would like to congratulate our last week's winner, um, Ms. Rinaliza Bogsulen from Baguio City. Um, she won um, uh, our prize for last week as she answered when was the first PRC license was administered in the Philippines and where, which is uh, which was held at the Manuel L. Quezon University. So congratulations again, Ms. Rinaliza Bogsulen. And I would like to invite our audience, if you know any colleagues, family members, uh, future RTRPs, current respiratory therapists, respiratory therapy students, um, this is a great topic for us today as we will learn about uh, Mr. Benji Aglin's topic, uh, Advanced Airway Management. So um, tell them to join and um, watch us live through our YouTube channel, Ang Artimo. Again, uh, once again, that's an Ang Artimo YouTube channel, and we are currently live. If you do have any questions at any point, please comment on our chat box, and we will gladly answer your question um, towards the end of the show. But if there's any problem, we will uh, look into it uh, immediately so we can fix the problem. Again, thank you for joining us today um, for our uh, for today today's episode. And now, uh, without further ado, uh, we will uh, welcome uh, our guest for tonight. Uh, good evening there, Mr. Benji Aglim. Good evening, everyone. It's uh, 9 p.m. here in uh, Conroe, Texas. It's mm -hmm. Saturday. Yeah, thank you so much for um, taking time and um, giving your time uh, to share your knowledge and expertise and be, uh, uh, taking the time to be a guest of the Ang Artimo Show. Maraming salamat po. All right. So uh, now we will uh, start with a question and answer. I have it on. The questions are currently at my hand right now. So um, tell us uh, who is Mr. Benji Aglim? Can you tell us where, what school did you go to? And where do you currently work? If you can share that to our audience tonight, sir. Yeah, I uh, I graduated my uh, I received my uh, Bachelor of Science in Respiratory Therapy from uh, Perpetual Binyan Laguna. It was uh, 1991, so it's quite a while. I'm the the third batch of the Bachelor of Science, and then uh, presently I'm working in um, in uh, HCA um, Houston Healthcare in Conroe, Texas. Mm -hmm. This is a uh, level two trauma. So I've been here for almost 18 years, and then uh, I have also some uh, uh, different uh, experience worldwide, which is I uh, 
worked seven years in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, mm -hmm. uh, from uh, 92 to 99. And then Singapore from uh, 1999 to 2003 in uh, National, Neuroscience, National Neuroscience Institute and, you know, Tantok Singh Hospital, the SARS Hospital of Singapore. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. you you've, uh, you've gone to the Middle East to uh, mm -hmm. Singapore and now to the United States. That's quite mm -hmm. a journey. <laughs> and yeah. uh, for sure, you know, you have a lot of experience in the field. Um, next question, sir, would be, um, okay, you already mentioned that you graduated from the Philippines. You are a BSRT and currently hold, uh, correct, uh, RRT, Neonatal Pediatric Specialist? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And then... Um, Mr. Benji, if I may ask, um, did you take up any course before being a respiratory therapist? Were you a former nurse or a med tech before, or was RT no. your first profession? No, I am a full-blooded respiratory therapist from the beginning. Yeah. Oh, nice. But remember, yeah. But remember, during that time, uh, in nine, in the early nineties, uh, mm. we call this an allied health profession. Mm -hmm. So these are. Physical therapies, occupational therapies, um, respiratory and speech, speech therapy. So in your first two years, it's allied health. Now you go for the qualifying te exam where you, if you qualify for the PT, OT, RT or speech therapy, or if you want to go on that course, you decide on your, on your third year. But, you know, from the PT point of view, initially, well, I like PT, physical therapy, but the uh, high took high quota course, and then I think it's you know I have a very high energy level, so I decided to go to speech instead of the OT or speech therapy. Mm -hmm. So from the beginning, I'm a uh, really a full blooded respiratory therapist. You know, finishing my uh, four year degree in 1991. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Um, full blooded respiratory therapist. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yep. <laughs> um, next question is. Um, well, you already mentioned that you have worked in Riyadh, Singapore, mm -hmm. now the United States, and currently working at Houston. Um, why did you choose to become a respiratory therapist? I know you briefly mentioned that you're trying to go, you know, a different route, but mm -hmm. why respiratory therapist and how was it now? If you are to go back, like, did you regret it or you wish to be someone else or how was it? Yeah, that's a good question. But, you know, during that time, in the first two years of college life, so we, there's a career orientation. So we know who are the PT, what's the job of the occupational therapist, the artist, mm -hmm. and the speech, speech pathology or speech therapy. And then I noticed that, uh, you know, the PT is like, uh, you know, it's more on rehab and mm -hmm. they work only uh Monday to Friday, they don't have any shifting. And then uh, I, I like more an action type, right. you know, more more energy level, high energy level. And I saw the mm -hmm. RT, they work in ER, you know, uh, they perform CPR mm -hmm. and all this thing. And I remember during my rotation in Lung Center, I was doing CPR and then the, the PT, OT and speech therapy from uh, UP and USD, they are just watching and they saw... They were impressed that the RT participate in, you know, life-saving measure, which for them is a different field. So they just uh, more in rehab. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's really like respiratory therapist in action. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In action, we, yeah. That's what I like. High energy. Mm -hmm. um, um, if uh, qu Next question would be, what is, what is the achievement that you consider that you're uh, – you're very proud of or you're most thankful for oh uh, good question uh, for me you know from the beginning mm. i still on the bedside for the past 29 years mm. you know money is in everything but for me the best achievement is teaching i mm. shared all this experience from riyadh singapore mm. and up to this time to the nursing and the respiratory department mm -hmm. And, you know, all this knowledge, I, again, I share to them. That's why I'm very involved in teaching. Right. From Saudi Arabia, Singapore, I was always involved mm -hmm. in teaching. I, I never leave the bedside. But I'm still there, but occasionally they tap me. They, um, 
they encouraged me the nursing department in uh, in Singapore to participate in their critical care nursing mm -hmm. program the same thing in in Saudi Arabia I was teaching uh, basic life support at the same time uh, an RT teaching so the lab of teaching is the best achievement because you know like hundreds I teach like almost hundreds of nurses mm -hmm. uh, RT and then also here um uh, uh, also related to the Boy Scout because I'm in a first aid too. Eh? So mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the more on the knowledge I share with them. It's the right. best. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, being a teacher, educator, or being able to share your knowledge and expertise is a great achievement. It It's fulfilling. You know, it's fulfilling. Yes. I agree mm -hmm. with you. That's a very <clears throat> good achievement. And yep. Um, next question would be... Um, what is your specialty? I know a lot of people do like working adults. Some are neo and pediatrics. What is yeah. your what is your specialty that you can consider that you love? Yeah, from the beginning, my uh, my specialization is adult critical care from mm -hmm. ER, a surgical ICU, medical ICU, CCU, neurotrauma, neuro neuro shock trauma. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's adult, adult critical care. That's why I have a wide range exposure to, and mm -hmm. you know, especially our hospital is a level two trauma. And the same thing in Singapore is a, the National Neuroscience Institute with all the head injury and trauma were being admitted in Singapore. So adult critical care is my special. Even though uh, my credential is neonatal pediatric, mm -hmm. I only uh, work in, in Saudi Arabia in the pediatric, not so much in neonate, more in pediatric. Mm -hmm. But after that, uh, but um, I specialize mostly in adult. Yeah, mm -hmm. same here, same here. I, you know, I have worked neonatal ICU or neonates and pediatric ICU, but still my passion and my lo love would be adult critical care. And, yes. you know, I would, I could go every day in the ICU or ED and take care of this patient. Mm -hmm. You know, even if I say, even with my eyes closed, I can do all of it. But with yeah. neonatal peds, you know, my heart is yeah. too weak to see exactly. those small kids yeah too small yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah um um so i know that you have mentioned that you love adult critical care what is your favorite unit in the hospital like oh, med uh, surge icu ed yeah, basically all. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed when I was assigned in ER, you know, because we are a member of the trauma team. Mm -hmm. So every night different, they call you, you know, activate your uh, trauma trauma, your trauma phone, which is with RT are very active in here. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, we coordinate with the EMT what they are bringing us, you know, it's a head injury or a head-on collision. Uh, I like also trauma, neurotrauma, and neuro ICU. Mm -hmm. You know, shock. Uh, the, it's totally different because in the in the medical ICU, it's more so in the long term. It takes time, weaning, pneumonia, COPD. Right. You know, I, I like more challenging. Right. Challenging. You know. Yeah. Uh, I. I. But I, basically, I like more. Basically, all ICU. You know. All ICU. Yeah. All ICU. My 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 lab of ICU there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, it being in the emergency department, it's kind of like you save, you yeah. do a band-aid solution and let the ICU team take care of them and win them yeah. off. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the adrenaline in a especially a trauma yeah, ICU. Hmm? That's very that's very fun. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. next question sir would be What is your favorite mechanical ventilator? Oh. Uh, from the beginning, um uh... I was trained, uh, you know, I work with many, but I like the the Serbo, the Serbo 900C, my foundation during that time. And then we have also the Draeger. Mm -hmm. I like this technology. It's uh, very basic, you mm -hmm. know, straightforward from Sweden, German made, you know, mm -hmm. nothing complicated. And they, uh, they keep on improving that, um, that ventilator, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. Dragers and servo. Yeah, those like are the Drager. The, mm -hmm, yeah, those are the vents Sir. that I've started. You know, yeah. mm -hmm. I wasn't mm -hmm. an RT for a long time, but I started with the Drager, so it's kind of like I consider <clears throat> cheating because you know mm -hmm. the newer vents they calculate everything for you, but Drager exactly, and servos yeah. are great yeah. ventilators. Servo, you com you have to co compute the minute ventilation yeah. to get the <laughs> volume. Yeah, you know now 
it's straightforward. It's <laughs> <laughs> you just you know plug in your numbers and you'll see the results mm -hmm. with no calculation. Yeah. <laughs> and the uh, next question, sir, would be: uh, I know you have worked w at many hospitals, many institutions from different mm -hmm. countries. You know, what is your where was your favorite workplace? You don't have to mention the hospital so nobody gets jealous, but where yeah. was it and why? In, uh, no, I will tell you that the truth. The best one is in uh, Singapore. Mm -hmm. And there's a main reason why that. And I even share in the critical care team here in, in Texas. Mm -hmm. The good thing in Singapore, especially in the, the hospital that I work, the the Tan Tok Seng Hospital and National Neuroscience Institute, mm -hmm. is they treat you very well. They they honor your decision making mm -hmm. and uh, your clinical judgment. They your expertise. They honor mm -hmm. that. Whether you can win the patient, whether you extubate, they believe in you because mm -hmm. you were there. And mm -hmm. then they, they you can give input to the pulmonologist, and they listen to you. Your suggestion, mm -hmm. everything, they listen to you. And unlike in other institutions mm -hmm. which the pulmonologists and they are the big boss. No, but here, no, in Singapore, no, that's what I like it. It's, uh, it's the, the teamwork mm -hmm. and the, um, the grand rounds in the grand rounds. We have multiple team, each patient, when the art is being questioned, you give input and they believe in you. If you say we, we cannot extubate because of this, they listen to you and they, they honor you, your professionalism and everything in Singapore is number one in my list mm -hmm. or, uh, in in a part, you know. Right. That's 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 a great place to be a respiratory therapist mm -hmm. where they um respect, you know, your expertise and your knowledge in order to yep. take, to take care of your patient. Because mm -hmm. at the you know, most of the time in our twelve or eight hour shifts, we are the ones who are bedside yeah. with the nurses. Exactly. And we know exactly what is mm -hmm. what is going on. And let's be honest, our physicians are too busy dealing with a lot of patients and we are there yeah. with our patients yes. more you know most of the time so when you know we say that hey doc do this because this is what i think you know this is what i think mm -hmm. is best for the patient and if your doctor said yeah you know they trust you and i think yes. you know that's the best place to be a respiratory therapist you know exactly yeah mm -hmm. especially, especially michael at night time mm -hmm. the pulmonologist is at home Right. All the specialists <laughs> at home, so only you mm -hmm. and the nursing and the supervisor are there. So you mm -hmm. have to call them before they respond. But you know, time is the time is the crucial right. part here is to right. respond to your decision yeah. making. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that I used to work one hospital. Um, this is close to where I live right now, where it's a small community hospital, less than hundred beds. So our pulmonary mm -hmm. critical care doctor or is a tele doctor overnight, <laughs> so you have to grab mm -hmm. the doc, the doc, you know, the robo doctor, roll it next to the mm -hmm. patient, and say, "Hey, doctor, can we change the vent settings to this?" Mm -hmm. What sucks is like, no, I don't want that. I'm like, I see, yeah. do you, mm -hmm. you want to come here and work? We're paying you anyway. <laughs> I'm so, mm -hmm. You're just trying to be rude because you want immediate action and immediate intervention yeah. again. Time is of the essence, so exactly. you know yeah. we're all mm -hmm. getting paid. We're working for the patient. Let's do mm -hmm. it now. Give me the, you know, give me the authority or the free freedom to, you know, mm -hmm. save this patient. Because if not, exactly. then, yeah, yeah, it's too hard. Then, you know, yes. I don't work there anymore. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that's one of the things I'm well, like, I want to Especially in, my, in, in Singapore that I work, we are covering four ICU at mm -hmm. night. I'm covering four ICU, 20 to 30 beds. And... Ooh. And then I hand and I, I do the band adjustment, the mm. pulmonology at home. And then I do my ABG and you know mm. and the weaning parameter. I do all mm -hmm. and they believe in you. Nothing negative, no negative comment. Right. They believe in you. I, I like yeah. it, you know. Yeah. Fresh, they say thank you in the morning. Yeah. With all your you know, we don't call them for band setting. I do my own band setting. Right. And they love it. Yeah. That's good. Now moving on to the next question is what is your uh Mo, uh, I would say, what is the most memorable art, you know, moment for you as a respiratory therapist that up to this day you would remember? It can be a negative or a positive uh, event, but what is the most memorable moment that you've had with your patient? Oh, good question. I have one. Mm -hmm. The most memorable, mm -hmm. memorable one up to this time was uh, 
after graduating in college, I was an OJT in Biluna or the Armed Forces of the Philippines Medical That's Center. Awesome. It was back 1991. And then we had an admission. This is a lady is a nursing student mm -hmm. uh, tried to commit suicide. But eventually, after I, I think she tried twice and we have to tube him and uh, end up in the ventilator and trach. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, in that in that case, so I approached her and then you know talked to her, you know some motivation and encourage, and she listened to me. So in in shortcut, after a few weeks, we were able to extubate her, and then in uh, I think a month, she visited me with a family member in our department, and the trach are already healed, and then she saying thank you to me, and she remember me, even though she's on the bench, and you know the family was. Uh, very appreciative mm -hmm. and thank you for the support that I and I was so happy because mm -hmm. you know I saved someone's life and motivate to be able to extubate and you know and continue her life as a nursing student and yeah. hope that they stop doing you know uh, suicide you know right. that's the memory of up to this time I still mm -hmm. can't forget that one yeah yeah that's you know the wonder of being a healthcare provider, but most yeah. of all as a respiratory therapist, you know, you mm -hmm. save someone else's life and you know yep. help them mm -hmm. continue to live. You know? Yes, exactly. Yes, sir. So next question is, um, I think this is this is not on my list, but I would like to ask because oh, yeah. you, you mm -hmm. work at you know Texas, and you know working in the United States as a healthcare professional. Um, I know potlucks do exist um, mm -hmm. prior COVID-19 oh, oh, yeah. or maybe uh -huh. secretly during COVID-19. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. But what is the most requested Filipino food they would like you to bring for a potluck? Okay, good question. That's, <laughs> I think everywhere, every country that I work or any um, traveling nurses and RD that I talk, they always want our noodles or the pancet. Yeah. That's the best one. And mm -hmm. then the lumpia. The those two. Lumpia. They are partner. Lumpia yeah. and pancet. Every time there's um, always, mm -hmm. you know, prior to COVID, we celebrate birthday every month. Mm -hmm. Our nurses in our ICU. And always pancet. They love the pancet. Mm -hmm. The lumpia. And uh, that's highly requested. Mm -hmm. In their mind, everybody you talk to, uh, nurses and RT from different states, New York, California, either Hispanic, Black or white, they remember that the pancet and lumpia. And lumpia, yeah, <laughs> the you know the favorite Filipino item mm -hmm. everywhere yep. in the world. That's yeah. good. Uh, next question. Um, um, what is your message to our aspiring respiratory therapists or our uh, current respiratory therapy students? Oh, okay, good. Mm. Well, usually I, I'm very good in motivating uh, students, even though uh, I'm, I'm very far here. And I usually, when I was in Singapore, no, I was in Saudi, every, Saudi Arabia every year, I go home. And then same thing in Singapore. Every time I go home, I uh, become a motivational speaker to uh, uh, a student mm -hmm. in the University of Perpetua Manila in Laguna mm -hmm. with Dr. Obilio. And then my message, mm -hmm. you know, now is very competitive whether in the RT profession and nursing, there's so many. In, in, in our field, you need, you, know, you need to be the best. And then also you need to be um, well-educated skills, you know, what you do. Because uh, right now, if I'm the, the manager, if you apply, you're the magna cum laude or summa cum laude. Yeah, I know you are very bright. You are maybe... Uh, book smart but what else can you do you know i check other stuff you know what's what are you are uh active in uh in in, in lecture or bls or other extra that you mm -hmm. do outside respiratory or you're teaching you know some extra stuff that you know are you a volunteer too or your your spare time you do this you do that that's what i i, I want to encourage everyone to be more active be more active you don't just uh go outside the box you know like um what I did in 1991, I hold, uh, I think I hold five jobs. Imagine that after graduating in college, I was employed in as an OJT in Biluna, mm -hmm. but I was teaching to as a clinical instructor in Emilio Aguinaldo College, Perpetual Binyan Laguna. I was uh, selling medical equipment 
And then I was uh, doing pulmonary function tests in uh, in uh, 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 Proctor and Gamble, Philippines. And I have a private patient in Lung Center of the Philippines. Imagine mm -hmm. that. And I was uh, 20 years old. Mm -hmm. So I do a lot. And then uh, you keep upgrading yourself. You take the BLS, ACLS, anything that you will use in your career, get it. You know, trauma, you attend a lot of seminars, all this stuff that within your field, you know, if you want more than that, go ahead, you know, seminars, symposium, mm -hmm. um, um, anything related to your field or, you know, and go outside the box too, if you want. Mm -hmm. So it's comp comp right now it's competition, competition. Right. It's not only the brightest, you know, that's what not only the managers checking the brightest. No, not anymore. It's mm -hmm. what, what you do to extra outside your field and what else can you offer? Right. Mm -hmm. True. Thank you. Thank you for that. And then now our last question is, what is your message to our fellow and current respiratory, respiratory therapist or in, uh, most especially our uh, RTRPs, you know, our respiratory mm -hmm. therapists in the Philippines? <clears throat> What is your message to them? Uh, some words of encour encouragement or, you know, where do you, you know, where do you want the profession to be, you know, heading from now on? Yes, that's very important because from that, from that year that I left uh, Philippines, mm -hmm. it was 1992. So I was employed in Singapore at a young age of 20, 21 years old. So I think I'm the youngest one who left and then the first one employed as a BSRT in the Middle East. Now, remember for the new grads and prep, you know, uh, RT, it's totally different now. It's not only inhalation therapy or what you do. No, uh huh. Mm -hmm. It's totally different. We have more responsibility, and I hope what to see in 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 our profession in the Philippines is to be, becoming more competitive. Not only they see you as a neb jockey, as a nebulizer guy. No, no. If you come to Singapore and Texas. It's not like that. We are more above like that. And where we intubate, I do airline insertion. Was in Singapore. I decannulate patient. I'll, down, I'll downsize trick. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not nebulizer only. No, no, no. So don't be discouraged. But I want you to to uh, be productive and active, and then try to show them who you really are. Knowledge is power. Remember, we want to show your the critical care team. And, you know, the member of the, the cold blue team, who you are and what's your capability. And the same thing, I hope in the future, some of the, the officer and member of the different organization to uplift mm -hmm. our profession, you know. Imagine it's been how many years since I left. It's almost 29 years now. There's some improvement, but I think we can do more, especially for the younger generation of mm -hmm. respiratory therapy, especially we're getting older. That's why I'm very active in sharing Sooner or later, you're going to be here in the front line, you know, the next generation. Yeah. Thank thank you for that, Mr. Benji. And I, and I know, and I just would like to add on to your, you know, last statement there. You know, um, I, you know, I, I never graduated, uh, you know, in the Philippines. I've never worked there. But, mm -hmm. you know, I have, you know, from, you know, from different people and from observation that I can mm -hmm. see different organizations could you know have different opinions but then again mm -hmm. as you mentioned this is not you know for um you know let's let i think the word is you know let's just unite and advance our profession for our future right mm -hmm. and whatever yep. it, exactly. yeah yeah whatever it was happened in the past you know mm -hmm. we we don't yeah. forget we learn from it but we do advance as you yeah. know as filipino respiratory therapists because again mm -hmm. we are representing the profession also in an international stage and we would like mm -hmm. our profession to be united a small number regardless of your affiliation right mm -hmm. regardless of your angst mm -hmm. you know to whoever it was let's unite mm -hmm. because again our future deserves more and they're the ones who's gonna bring this profession further forward right yeah. exactly all right, so thank you for that. Uh, our Q and A. Uh, thank mm -hmm. you for answering all our questions, uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Benji. Let's pause for a short break, and uh, we will proceed with your uh, presentation, uh, mm -hmm. advanced airway management. So, to our live audience, if you have any question, um, 
shout out quickly, uh, Miss. Uh, sorry, am I? I might mispronounce your name. She or Shay Francisco, uh, from Batangas City Healthcare, uh, Jesus of Nazareth Pulmonary Department. Thank you for joining and uh, thank you for your support. So we will now proceed with the advanced airway management after a short break. So hang in, hang with us, uh, um, our uh, fellow artists, and we'll be right back. Okay. Mr. Benji, you can start yes. sharing your screen. Oh, start now? Oh, no, okay. not yet, but you can uh, start sharing your screen while we're on break. Oh, let me see. Yeah. Three, two, one. All right. Um, now we're back. Uh, now we're going to proceed with Mr. Benji Aglim's Advanced Airway Management. And take it away, sir. Hello. Uh, good evening from uh, Conroe, Texas, and also our friends as far away as Saudi Arabia, Singapore, and also in Philippines, which is uh, now in the morning of... Uh, of Sunday. So I'm very fortunate to be uh, able to work for the past 29 years for um, uh, a, a trauma, trauma hospital, a level two trauma hospital, also um, um, a neuro trauma ICU in Singapore, the National Neuroscience Institute and Tantok Seng Hospital. So this is going to be a, 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 a good opportunity to, to all of you because you don't see this type of um, a lecture and also, you don't see this uh, type of in your books, like the Egan of Fundamental. This is very, very advanced airway care. And then I um, usually give this lecture for the doctors and an uh, artist student in, in Lone Star College when I was a, a clinical instructor. And also, this is part of the, the ACLS, which I give to the doctors and also the critical care nursing program. So you will watch and learn all the different advanced airway. Remember, if you are in level two trauma hospital, it's very, very advanced. So it means that we, uh, we have a complete team of neurosurgeon, uh, uh, orthopedic surgeon, neurotrauma surgeon, and a team of critical care nurses and respiratory therapy. So remember, the RT plays an important part of the, the trauma team. So if there's a trauma activation, um, the, the EMT, when they call 911 in the field, the EMT will relate to the uh, to us in the ER. It's a basic uh, info about the 29 years old, ejected, head-on collision, head injury, something like that. So you are preparing yourself. You need to be in five minutes time in the emergency room to wait for this patient. So we work as a team. So this time, all this type of all advanced airway management are very useful. Okay, as a respiratory therapist, we must be familiar with the different airway devices and equipment used in, in OR, ER, and used by EMS and life flight. And uh, remember, not all hospitals are equipped with this type of equipment. That's why I'm going to show it to you. 
And also, uh, you don't see this in regular intensive care units. So this is a time for opportunity to, to learn about all the equipment. And, and always remember that not all intubation are easy. So we will, uh, I will teach you on how to uh, deal with them. Now, the difficult intubation, there are several reasons why uh, patient has a difficult intubation. Not all. That's why as part of the intubation team in trauma, you deal with many, many uh, cases in ER, also in ICU, you know, from, um, from head trauma, head and neck trauma, and many more. First is the jaw and neck immobility. A very good example of this one is the short neck. And anything with jaw trauma, it could be from a, a head-on collision, a fractured jaw, or anything injury related to the vehicular accident. So this type, you cannot do the head tilt chin lip maneuver. So going to be a challenging. So in case like this, you should know or assist in, uh, in, in intubation. Deformity of the face and neck, which is uh, uh, common in uh, facial injury too whether it's industrial accident or uh, uh, vehicular or um, uh, any uh, 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 drowning too. We have some lots of drowning with so many injuries. So you should know how to deal with this type of um, uh, cases and you know how to intubate and in dealing with this. Okay, this is very common. You see this all the time in, in ER and ICU. It doesn't mean when you open the airway, it's clean. No, it's a lot of, you know... Um, vomit you see a lot of uh, uh pouring material like sometime i saw a um, a, uh, a banana cornflakes everything it's messy so you need to be ready how to remove them and then uh, the the most common part of difficult intubation is this one is the inability to visualize the uvula with the mouth opening suggesting airway obstruction so this is what they call the anti the the you uh, is the what they call anterior, you know, and uh, it's very and when you hear them very anterior, it means it's uh, located upward, which you cannot see or visualize by uh, direct uh, traditional laryngoscopy, either both by uh, using the Mac or Miller blade. So this is the one you use your uh, Bijou guided laryngoscope, okay, and um, this one another I'll show you. Uh, a great example of uh, the the blood that I removed from a uh, this one. So the, the history of this guy is just like a normal NGT insertion in the floor, but after a few minutes got stridor and uh, desaturate, and they rushed this to uh, our ICU. So when I bug, so in other words. Uh, we're ready for intubation. So when I was bag and mass, when I uh, opened the airway, I saw this huge blood, like a jello type. And uh, this is a perfect opportunity to take picture. And then um, this type of blood, you, you cannot remove using your yanker. I need to use the McGill forcep. And you know, you should be familiar with the McGill forcep. This is designed to, to guide the ETT if you are doing nasal intubation. Okay, but I use that because that's the one I can reach and remove that old blood there. So this definitely this uh, the guy have some uh, uh, clotting issue. So so you can see this one is huge clot in the throat. So after removing this one, we tube him, and then after uh, I think overnight ventilation, we extubated him and uh, doing great. Now a lot of uh, RT are. Uh, either uh, private message mentioned me uh, regarding intubation policy. Now, remember, each hospital, they have their own policy in how they will allow the RT for intubation. I work in two hospitals here. Uh, my full-time and my, uh, my part-time. My part-time is a long-term acute care. And uh, we are allowed to intubate. Uh, the same thing during my time in Singapore, I was able to intubate in uh, a surgical ICU and medical ICU. But remember, each hospital, they have their own policy, but these are some of the common. Remember, before you are allowed to intubate, and this should be approved by the critical care committee. You know, there's a regular meeting, very active, being done, 
regularly uh, like in Singapore you know I remember I was part of the critical care committee and then this they discussed this thing and then all the head nurses and the assistant director of nursing anybody involved in the, the critical care team or in other hospital they have the cold blue team it, it should be approved by the cold blue team which is usually an anesthesiology uh, intensivist pulmonologist and also the team of nurses from uh, different units. So it should be uh, approved uh, upon discussion. And then also, if they already approved that, you need to be trained in operating room for a certain number of hours under the guidance of uh, anesthesiologists. And remember, we have the intubation mannequin. First, you train there. But remember, the mannequin is totally different than, than the live person, you see. Uh, when you open the airway, the mannequin is very stiff. Unlike in OR, these are clean cases. They are NPO. And uh, the, the anesthesiology will guide you step to step. What are different techniques in intubation? And also how to, in, uh, how to deal with difficult intubation. Now, in our, in our hospital, our only lead RT or supervisor are allowed to intubate. And the same thing, you need to have a certain... Uh, uh, number of intubation before they allow you to make sure that you are competent, both the, the traditional laryngoscope and also the, the glidoscope or the video assisted laryngoscope. So you need to be trained on both uh, type of laryngoscope. So these are the answers. Some of the people asking me, are, are they allowed to intubate? Yes, but different policy per hospital. Here in Texas, this is the most common and the same thing in Singapore. Now well, let us proceed to the the different airway. Oh, now this is by the way I forgot to tell you this is a good example of the the certification when uh, back in 1998 when I rotated uh, all our staff in security forces hospital to to rotate in OR for a 48 hours intubation training. So you will intubate maybe uh, 10 to 20 uh, patient. And then uh, you get a certification, and then, and then, uh, uh, hopefully they will allow you to intubate for the cold blue team and, and approve uh, in any cold blue situation. But during that time, I'm initiated this move, but I left. I went to Singapore, and then I think it's, it is stopped. Uh, it stopped to the critical care committee uh, whether we are allowed to intubate. But I think it's, they were not allowed to intubate because I stopped from there after my, um, my suggestion to, to let everybody train in OR for 48 hours, yeah. Okay, the first type of ETT is what we call the armored ETT. You can see from here, they are wire reinforced. There's coil, there's coil wrapped around inside, okay? This type of ETT are ideal for head and neck surgery. These are also very common for uh, surgery when they do a spinal surgery because you put the patient in prone position and there's no kinking here. And ideally, this is right ETT for our COVID patient because we prone them. And the biggest challenge for our uh, prone COVID patient is kinking of the tube and they are not that flexible compared, uh, the, the traditional ETT is not that flexible com compared to this one you cannot kink, and they're very, very soft. And I will show you the difference between the two of them. Now, this is the first comparison. The top one is the armored ETT, and the, the below part is the standard. They all look the same, but when you touch them, the armored ET are softer and it's solid. It's hard to kink. Even you try to squeeze that, it won't kink. And this is a good example when you bend them. Look at their standard ETT. It's king totally. But look at the armored ETT. It still maintains the patency of the endotracheal tube. Even if you bite them or, uh, you know, uh, apply pressure, it won't king. So these are mostly commonly used in OR. Uh, but occasionally we receive this one uh, after surgery or um, just for overnight ventilation. But you see them occasionally. So... The nurses will ask you, what's that? And you have to explain that that's the armored ETT. Very nice ETT for, uh, for a proning, for a COVID. The next one 
will will be the what we call double lumen ETT. You don't see this all the time in a in a ER or a, an ICU, but occasionally in surgical ICU you see them. So what happened with this one is uh, a specialized tube. They are designed to isolate the lungs anatomically and physiologically. A tube is used for independent lung ventilation. Remember, to insert this type of uh, ETT is need to be fiber optic guided because you want to make sure, did you see that blue, blue cup in here in the tube? That's what we call the, the bronchial tube, lumen. And I will show you how it was uh, located. And this is the, the, the cuff, the bronchial cuff, and this is the tracheal cuff. It's a big one, okay? And they supply you a two type of syringe to inflate both sides. And at the end, there's two. One designed for the left ventilator and the right. So just imagine you'll be wondering how they will uh, do lobectomy or remove the tumor from the right lung if the lungs keep on inflating. So this is the answer. So you intubate you with double lumen, they collapse the right lung, they ventilate the left lung, and they do resection on the collapsed lung. So this is the one you use for that. And this is the, the actual position. I use a DIY using my uh, leftover tube from, the gar from gardening. It's a transparent uh, tubing in a punctured hole and put it in a board. You see this one, the blue, this is the bronchial tube. Okay, and this is need to be situated situated or located with the proper fiber optic bronchoscope. And you inflate that one using the blue uh, balloon. You see this one? That will inflate. Now, there's another cuff here, the tracheal cuff, which is to prevent the leak going to your upper airway. Okay, now you can see there's a small hole here. That's going to be ventilating the left side of the lung, left and right side. And on the end, it divides into two. You see the color-coded blue here? That's designed for ventilating the right mainstem bronchus, okay, and the left. And at the end of the day, if the doctor said, you can collapse this one, we can make it like a, a regular ETT. What will happen is I will collapse this, this balloon, this cuff, and then... There's an adapter here which join together to become a one, one adapter for the ventilator to ventilate using uh, a one ventilator only, okay? So this is a, what we call the double lumen ETT. You don't see this all the time, but occasionally you will encounter this in surgical ICU. The anesthesiologist said we will extubate in the morning, but just keep them on this type of uh, ETT. And you'll be wondering, whoa, what's this? And then the nurses are also not familiar with this type, okay? The next type of ETT is what we call the ray, ray oral ETT. You see, it's curved, okay? It's when you open the package, it's already this uh, type of curvature, okay? This is used in surgery to facilitate directing tubes away from the surgical side. Commonly used in ENT or facial surgery. So when you intubate orally, instead of the ETT is going straight, which uh, will bother the surgeon if they're doing uh, eye surgery or nasal surgery, so it's going downward to facilitate for the surgeon to work on that type of uh, operation. Okay? You see that? Oral, oral, ray ETT. This one is going on that side. So you facilitate a procedure on the eyes and also to the nose or facial surgery. RAA, Ray, Ray Oral ETT. Commonly used in OR. Uh, occasionally you see them in ICU if they cannot extubate just for uh, overnight ventilation. The next one is the same thing, Ray Nasal ETT. So in, it is also used in surgery to facilitate directing tubes away from the surgical side. It's often used in oral or mandibular surgery or maxillofacial surgery. So what happened, this is uh, done nasally. So you have to, you have a, uh, an area for the surgeon to do oral, oral surgery without obstructing his view. 
So this is going to the nose, okay, like that. And so I get a wide space for the oral surgeon, okay? Same thing, occasionally you see this in surgical ICU. You the anesthesiology will tell them, uh, we will just uh, overnight ventilation, you keep that ETT, and we will actuate early in the morning. And you'll be wondering, what's that? The hardest part here is when you suction, okay? Imagine that, how you pass your, your small uh, suction catheter here. All right, this is one of my favorite uh, ETT. You don't see this all the time in your uh, regular ICU. It's also never used in uh, OR. These are commonly used in, uh, in the field, used by EMT and Life Flight, also known as King Tube. The, 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 mud, the wonder of this ETT is you can insert this blindly through the oropharynx into the hypopharynx to create an airway. These are used for difficult intubation. They use this in life life if you are uh, transferring a patient in a helicopter and then and there's a limited space in, uh, in the helicopter and uh, you cannot apply your snipping position or your jaw thrust maneuver. Same thing in a, uh, in a in vehicular trauma where the patient is still inside the, the vehicle and you cannot retreat them and the patient has head injury, neck and spinal, and you cannot open the airway with a regular head to chin lip or jaw thrust maneuver, this is the best ETT for that. You don't need a laryngoscope to insert this. We just open the airway. You push until it stops. Now remember, this line is just a hole. 80% when you insert this one goes to esophagus. So this balloon, when you inflate all this uh, 60 cc, will inflate both. So this one will block your gastric content so to prevent back flowing and cause aspiration this one is the tracheal cap which is to prevent leaking going to the upper airway when these are both inflated this the, the gas coming from your ventilator or your bag and mask goes to the lungs okay and then this is what we call the uh, 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 supra glottic type of airway it means is not inserted into the epiglottis, it's, it's, it's above the epiglottis, okay? Remember this one, King Chu, very common and used by EMT and life flight and also all this uh, uh, limited space and trauma. And I will show you the position of this one, okay? See, and this is the lateral view when you insert this. Same thing, you don't need a laryngoscope to open this, just open the airway, push it in, it goes directly to the esophagus. You inflate the 66 syringe, inflate both. This is the esophageal balloon to, to block the gastric content so it won't cause aspiration. And also you have your, your uh, 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 the upper airway, uh, the tracheal cap, so the gas won't escape so you can ventilate and then this is smaller here a hole that will go to your lungs, okay? You see that? This is the king tube. Very interesting, and I like it. Now, the next one is what we call the laryng laryngeal mass um, uh, airway, or LMA. It's, this is an old type of uh, 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 airway used mostly in OR, or, you know, day surgery, With some people, they don't do intubation, they just do this for short-term uh, surgery. Now, also known as, as LMA, laryngeal mass. It's also just like the, the king tube, they are also called supraglottic airway device. It means you don't insert them inside the epiglottis. It's just above, okay? And commonly used in OR. The hazard of uh, using this one is it doesn't protect your airway and it will leak sometime. It causes aspiration on the side. Remember, when you open this, the the sealed container, this one is deflated. So you need to reinflate to in, reinflate this one to able to seal the epiglottis, okay? So this is the ring, laryngeal mass airway device, supraglottic. And this is another one. This is also the next generation of LMA, the relative of the LMA or called IGL. So the second generation, same thing is supraglottic. 
used widely in anesthesia and also all our EMT worldwide. So what happened it, compared to the LMA, the LMA, you have to reinflate. You see that? You have to reinflate this one. And then you need to have a, a almost like a 20 cc syringe. When compared to eye gel, no, you don't need to reinflate. This is like a gel type. Okay? You insert this and immediately you will go to the epiglottis. It's a superglottic and then you can ventilate in bag and mass or a, a, a ventilator. And available in, I think, either uh, three or four sizes. There's also some pediatric sizes in this one. So this is also used for difficult intubation, wherein you cannot uh, apply the head to chin lip because of the head and neck trauma. Eye gel. Okay, this is another special type of ETT. You don't see this all the time, but uh, I... A, uh, a company produced this to um, to avoid and reduce what we call the VAP, VAP, ventilator associated pneumonia. So they can you can suction above the cup of the ETT, has a dorsal port above the cup designed to suction secretion above the sub subglottic area. So you can see here, this is a small hole. So it's a small hole, multiple hole. So what happened here when you see this patient? which is uh, the nurses are not familiar, there's two connector, one to inflate your cup, and there's another extra here. So the nurses are not familiar about this type of ETT, so definitely they will ask you. So I explain to them. So this is designed for suctioning. You use your Tygon tubing here, your suction catheter, and anything secretion accumulated above the cup will be suctioned instead of going down or seeping downward here with cause pneumonia. So you can suction this one here above above the cup. But the, the downfall of this one is they're only good for a few few hours because after a few days the secretion are become thick and it's like a super glue. When you suction, it won't suction here, so it's stuck. You cannot. So so that's why some of the hospital that they use this occasionally you can. Now we go to the other accessory which we use for difficult intubation. This is what we call the bougie. Uh, used all the time in, in uh, OR and anesthesiology use this all the time for difficult intubation. Uh, ETT introducer or it called uh, intubation catheter. It is important for the clinician performing intubation and having epiglottitis only view on the first attempt. And remember the tip of this uh, bougie is curved. And the other one is straight. When you are assisting the anesthesiology or the pulmonologist, this is the one you give to them, and this is the one you insert in the epiglottis, not the straight one, the curved one. Okay? And I will show you here. So these are the different types of uh, guide wire. Okay? The first one is the commonly used J shape used for a glidoscope. Okay? And they are very steep and hard to, and uh, they're already shaped like J-shaped because for difficult intubation, okay? The second one is the stylet. This is the standard uh, flexible that we use in, uh, in our regular ETT or regular intubation. And you can form your, uh, your ETT. The next one is the elastic bougie. As I told you, it's curved at the end. This is the one you insert in the mouth going to the epiglottis. And this is the position of the bougie. So when you open the airway using your uh, McGill forcep, and this is where you put the bougie there. You see the curved one? The straight on top, the curved going down. Okay? So this is very important if you're assisting too because the doctor will be relying on you as a team when you, as, you know, when they ask you, give me the bougie and you put on this position and insert it like that. Now, another extra is what's the position of your tracheostomy? People uh, ask me all the time is because uh, occasionally if I'm assigned in ER, I receive a lot of trach patients from nursing home and trach patients from, from home, whether on ventilator or just uh, a room air with an HME. So I use my uh, uh, DIY, same thing in my garage. So, so you can visualize so the left, 
and the right men's stem Broncos. And this is how our tricks position. There's a cap. Occasionally, if I'm assigning ER, I change the trick. You know, if they are uh, out, maybe they cuff it out or the cup is busted, need to be changed. The RT are the one changing the trach tube. Either I from a cuff, uh, from uncuff to cuff because I need to ventilate them. There's a proper technique which I will show you later on. Now this is the one we use for visual laryngoscopy or the glidoscope. This is the the first model we got, but we purchased another one which uh, a bigger screen and the same thing is a stand alone. See, there's a uh, uh, like an IB pole connected. Uh, these are uh, uh, commonly in ER, ICU, in OR. So this is a time by use for difficult intubation. The price of this uh, glidoscope is around, uh, I think, ten thousand US dollar. The 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 the, the, the what they call this the the blade is disposable. We can also record, take picture of everything during intubation here, and everybody can see uh, the the anesthesiology you and also the nurses, so you can see for educational purposes too. But now it's bigger screen. Now, this is the one we use for uh, code blue in case for difficult intubation because those the, the glidoscope with the stand is only for ICU, OR, and ER. So in case we need a, uh, an extra help for difficult intubation in the, the floor, this is the one we use. The same thing is a glidoscope. Which is but it's rechargeable, battery operated, and this one is a disposable uh, disposable blade. Okay, this one costs I think the whole unit costs two thousand dollars, and I think the blade disposable costs maybe a consumable around twenty to fifty dollars each. Okay, easy to maintain. Is throw this one, you clean this one, and you you recharge. Now before we go to the troubleshooting. I want to show you the parts of the ATT, which all RT should be familiar with, okay? So this is the Bible tip, which is very important when you do x-ray. You see this one, if it, it is, uh, you are in the right or uh, right main stem or left main stem, or you just above the carina. You see the Marpy eye, and this is your cup. Vocal cord guide. You see that? When you intubate the patient, this is the, you can see this if you pass this one, you're almost uh, in a proper position. That's why vocal cord guide. When you insert it, you need to pass the vocal cord and exactly you're gonna be two to three cm above the carina. Okay? And then this is the pilot balloon. This is the pilot line, PVC tubing. This is our 14 to 15 millimeter adapter, which fits exactly on your manual resuscitator or ventilator connector, okay? Now, very important, you have to know how to troubleshoot what happened if this is if this uh, cup is busted, what happened is the pilot line is cut, or the pilot balloon is leaking. Now, I will show you some troubleshooting technique. You don't see this in your books. Now, this is a good example, which I encounter, I think I was in Saudi Arabia, 2, 3 in the morning, it's an ARDS, 15 pip, high FIO2, such barely reach 90%. And the nurse was trimming the beard and accidentally cut the pilot line. Now we're in big trouble. They call me, Benji, the patient desaturate very fast. And the worst thing when we call the anesthesia, anesthesiologist is in OR with a, a neuro, neuro trauma patient ongoing. So what you do? You extubate? Uh-uh. If you extubate this patient, the patient will die. And you cannot bag. You bag at 15... 15 uh, uh, PIP, high FIO2, and lung compliance is decreased. This patient will not survive. Okay, so what did I do during that time? So in the quick, quick, quick thinking decision making, I use a uh, gauge 18 uh, blunt needle. So I inserted that one, and I was able to reinflate and maintain the saturation around 90% while waiting for the anesthesiology to come for extra help. I cannot intubate this patient, okay? So, so after the patient, after the anesthesiology arrived in the ICU, this is what he did. He asked the bougie, and you see the, the curb, curb type, we inserted in, put the, remove the old one, the old ETT, 
See, this is another one, what we call the uh, another type of uh, uh, ETT uh, introducer, or I think they call this Floba, another brand name, but there's a connect it is longer than the Buji, and you have a connector here. Both works the same thing. The Buji and this one, you insert it, and you remove the old busted ETT, and get the new one, and you just glide it in, and you are able to uh, resume ventilation. Now, this is the tip. The tip of the other ETT introducer, you see that one? The tip is designed for oxygen. You can connect oxygen here. And also at the same time, you can put an emergency, emergency drug like, like uh, uh, epinephrine if you don't have any line in a cold blue situation. Okay, but very seldom happen. But I use this for delivering oxygen. Your oxygen tubing fits here while you are waiting for help or some equipment before intubation. Okay, you can use also the the, the bougie in, uh, as a guide wire for your uh, uh, trach, uh, which is very common. I use this in ER if the patient is using a cuff, an, uh, an cuff trach, uh, trach tube, and we need to ventilate them using, uh, you know, the ventilator because they are in distress or they are in pneumonia or other issue so you cannot ventilate them with an uncap so i remove this one in in change it with a cup one and i can connect to the ventilator okay now if you don't have the bougie on the hand you can use this technique which is i used to i use a regular suction catheter remember our regular suction catheter you know the common suction that we use for trach ett or oral suctioning nasal nasotracheal suctioning, what I will do is cut the end. It's soft, so it fits very well. It's not long. Okay, cut this end, and I can use it as a guide wire and insert the new calf trach tube. And I think that's all. Thank you so much. So oh, thank you, uh, Sir Benji, for that uh, very informative um, lecture. Sorry, let me just restart my camera here. Oh, sorry, some technical problem there. <laughs> no worries. Um, we're still here. Thank you, Sir Benji, for that uh, very in that and uh, very informative uh, airway management um, mm -hmm. presentation. Um, if our audience have any questions, please. Um, Sorry, type them in the chat box in our YouTube live um, and um, we can answer some questions for you. Um, yeah, so, you know, I've on your presentation, there's a lot of things that I think, you know, as they call it, you know, uh, a lot of things that um, we can MacGyver, right? Like the mm -hmm. like the yep. suction catheter, you know, as that, a guide use that. for mm -hmm. freight tube. I've never yep. seen that before. Yes, but I used that. That's, uh -huh. Yeah, that's my original. Because remember, yeah. if, you're, if you're in ER, you ask the bougie, most of them are uh, in their storage or uh, mm. in, in OR, you have asked them, get this one. But the only one is very easy to access is our regular suction catheter. And they are very soft and they are designed for suctioning. And I use that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, you know, again, as you mentioned earlier, if you're in a critical uh, situation, you have to critically yep. think and act very fast because, again, mm -hmm. we're dealing with, you know, emergent situation. That's very mm -hmm. good. And one more thing while we're waiting for some uh, questions here. The armored ET tube, I have mm -hmm. not seen them before. Yep. I have not heard from them, but those are going to be you know, great um, ET tube for the prone COVID patients, you know? Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Yeah, exactly. And, the, you know, the problem we encounter, we have a lot of patient in proning is, you know, when you turn the patient head and neck like that, mm -hmm. it, it, it kinks. It's very hard yeah. to suction. And then uh, this is the ideal ETT, the armored ETT, and very soft, oh, easy to maneuver. And um, 
it's very impressive. And remember, Mike, all this, uh, all this uh, airway that I showed to you, I have hands on. It's in my, it's here. And I usually uh, show and tell. And these are all my original. I didn't uh, get that picture from online. And this right. is my actual collection, yeah. out of the collection of uh, airways. Yeah, I was about to mention that because these pictures are very, you know, they're very original. And it yeah, this like is mine. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, you don't see this in your Egan's fundamental of respiratory or <laughs> article. You don't see this one. Yeah, that's great. And uh, um, I don't think we have any questions from our live audience. Uh, I would like uh, to thank you, Mr. Uh, Benji, for um, mm -hmm. joining us today. Can you, thank you. For, thank you for. Um, sorry, let me fix my computer real quick here. Uh, So yeah, thank you for joining us here uh, today and we truly appreciate you um, um, sharing your knowledge and expertise to all of us. And mm -hmm. again, it's, you know, very original, not coming from a textbook and all these mm -hmm. pictures are, you know, great help for all of us. Even for those, I believe, you know, experienced respiratory therapists, mm -hmm. you know, they would learn a lot from what you have presented to us and they can use it on their everyday practice. Mm -hmm. So... Thank you. Um, if you have a, uh, any more parting words for us, sir, last thoughts before um, we let you go for tonight. Oh, yeah. Okay. So just like what tell all the artists, student, you know, just study hard, work very, very hard, you know, for your parents too. And then also um, another thing uh, other people maybe not thinking is uh, thinking ahead of time. After graduation, what's your plan? After graduation, what's your plan? What's your plan? You're planning to do OJT, sales. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be uh, an actual clinical practice. You know, things like that. Because uh, after graduation, I have clear in my mind. I want to work immediately. I don't care if it's exhausting and multiple jobs. So it's clear in my mind. And I, I need to be ahead of ahead of my peers. Ahead of, you know, ahead of, ahead of time, everything. So, so also, you know, with the help of your parents, you know, they will guide you and your colleagues too. So that's why I don't waste time. At the age of 21, I was already in the Middle East. I'm the youngest one. And, and that's how my career begins and then uh, I move forward. So go ahead and be productive and um, study hard. Good luck to the... If, another thing for the people who failed the exam, no problem. Retake it again. Study hard and retake. It's not end of the world. You know, it's not end of the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your time, Mr. Benji Aglim. We mm -hmm. truly appreciate you. And also, I would like to mention to our audience, um, you know, as um been a long time that we were thinking of this as a group. And uh, Mr. Benji Aglim, you know, have reminded us and said that, hey, why don't we do a webinar series for our fellow respiratory therapists? And um, sure enough, <laughs> you know, I had more time. You know, we were busy with COVID-19 care and you know, we're just busy with our everyday lives. And, you know, it was kind of a fortunate and unfortunate uh, instance for me that I was uh, on medical leave. So I did have time to, um, you know, research about doing this YouTube live and creating this. So now here we are and we thank you for your time. And hopefully we can uh, invite you again soon, sir. So, so you know, to, um, you know, share some more knowledge and expertise in the field of respiratory care. Yeah, anytime, Michael. And remember, thank you so much for your initiative. Mm -hmm. And remember, this is for us. This is for the student, you know, the all the RT practitioner right now and also the future RT, okay? Remember, sharing is caring. Yeah. You know, we need to, to transfer these years of experience to other people, you know? Mm -hmm. Who will help? We'll help each other. Nobody will help you. Right. Okay. Uh Thank you. Maraming salamat po, Sir Benji. Uh, uh, we'll see you again soon. Thank All you. right. Good night and uh, have a nice day. Good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. So, um, again, that's uh, Mr. Uh, Benji Agleem uh, from Conroe, uh, Texas, USA. Um Thank you for your time. Thank you for your knowledge. Thank you for your expertise. And we thank you for uh, being our second uh, uh, guest for our show tonight. 
So um, again, thank you for our audience that have joined us today. This uh, um, episode will be uploaded into our YouTube channel on two different parts. I mean, it will be uploaded as a whole and it will be also trimmed for the part one would be Q&A and then the part two will be the actual presentation of Mr. Benji Eglin. So uh, shout out to our audience um, and have comment, uh, left a comment on our chat box. Ms. She Francisco and Ms. Finn Bote again. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, and here we go again. Now I do have a question. Um, usually, uh, uh, you know, we're just starting and um, I just want to be a little, you know, just have a little fun and... Um, Share some, you know, some to our audience and encourage uh, audience for us. So, uh, last time we gave a uh, one thousand pesos, were about twenty three, twenty five dollars, depending on the exchange rate. Um, but hopefully uh, soon we can increase that. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, I think the question would be, um, if you can uh, answer this question on our chat box, would be. Um, what kind of advanced airway would you uh, is typically used in a um, um, pre-hospital setting? Um, so if the EM, EMS or emergent medical services are trying to put an advanced airway but they're, they're unable to, what kind of, uh, do you think an advanced airway you can place um, if uh, endotracheal tube is not possible in the field? What do you guys think is that airway called? And um, you guys can free to uh, um, and uh, type in to our chat box, and we will wait for an answer. So it's an advanced airway that's typically used pre-hospital setting, if a or a, even an operating room, if a, a, a endotracheal tube is not possible. Might kind of be a difficult question, but that's one of the presentation. Um, uh, it was mentioned by Mr. Benji Aglim, and he had shown us some pictures. Uh, so that's it. Um, so that's our question for today. Um, anyway, um, thank you again for joining us today on our second episode of Ang Artimo. I would like to invite everyone, uh, um, our colleagues, our friends in the field, and our audience and those aspiring respiratory therapists to join us on our third episode next week uh, with Mr. Leonard Higoy from um, Alberta, Canada. Um, he will be uh, presenting us um, MDIs with spacer versus nebulizer. That will be his presentation next week. So again, Mr. Leonard Higoy from Alberta, Canada would be our third speaker or third guest for our third episode on Ang Artimo. Okay? So, good morning everyone. Uh, Middle East, uh, Dubai, Singapore, Philippines. Uh, good morning to you all and good afternoon, I think, I guess, for some countries. And then good evening here uh, for us in the western uh, side of the, <laughs> the, the world. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, stay strong. Laban lungs. You know, mga party peeps. Let's keep um, saving lives uh, one breath at a time. Uh, I do thank you and appreciate you. And also, again, if you are, just a reminder, if you are a bachelor's or if you're a respiratory therapy program in the Philippines, BSRT, and if you want to promote your school or your program in our show, please do message me on our Filipino Association of Respiratory Therapists International page or party, or you can find me on Facebook and message me personally at Michael Di Peralta, or please email me at angartimo at ang artimopo at gmail.com again that's ang artimopo at gmail.com so you can send me a message and we can showcase your program or i mean your respiratory therapy program here on our show so we can encourage more enrollees and encourage more uh respiratory aspiring respiratory therapists to join our field okay so good night. Um, thank you for watching us. And please, if you have just recently joined us and have not seen the whole show, 
um, in 30 minutes or so, uh, I will be uploading the two parts portion for the question and answer and the uh, actual presentation of Mr. Benji Gleam. Okay, stay, stay safe, stay strong mga kabaga, and always stay well, and see you guys on the next episode.